Today's problem is the pendulum problem from your textbook, which is for your homework for tonight. I'm doing a modified pendulum problem with different numbers. So let's take a look at this one here. We want to begin by understanding the problem. Modified pendulum problem. And you can see a figure here. So a pendulum hung from the ceiling makes a complete back and forth swing each eight seconds. So here's the ceiling. We have the pendulum. It's hung from the ceiling. And what does it mean that it makes a complete back and forth swing each eight seconds? Let's keep reading and then we'll come back to the figure. As the pendulum swings, its distance d in centimeters from one wall of the room depends on the time t in seconds since it was set in motion. So t is measured in seconds and it is the time since the pendulum was set in motion, since, since, since it starts swinging. At t is equal to 1.5 seconds, the distance, and what are we talking about when we say the distance? We measure the distance from the pendulum to one wall of the room. So this is one wall of the room, and we're measuring the distance from the pendulum to one wall of the room. At time is equal to 1.5 seconds. In other words, one and a half seconds after the pendulum starts moving, the distance of the pendulum from the wall is at a maximum of 120 centimeters from the wall. So what does that mean? So we're looking at the pendulum being the furthest it could be from the wall. So maybe it would be about here. And when it is the furthest it could be from the wall, its distance from the wall is 120 centimeters. And it is at this point in its swing, one and a half seconds after it starts moving. So at time is equal to one and a half seconds, D is equal to 120 centimeters. The lower bound of D is 40 centimeters. What does that mean? The lower bound of D is 40 centimeters. What that means is when the pendulum is the closest it could be to the wall, its distance from the wall at that time would be 40 centimeters. So, so let's say this is like the closest it gets to the wall. So at that point in time, the distance from the wall at that point in time will be 40 centimeters. So the distance at that time will be 40 centimeters uh, at whatever time it would be there. Now, how long does it take for the pendulum to make one complete back and forth swing? A back and forth swing is like this. So let's say we're at time is equal to 1.5 seconds. It goes back toward the wall and it goes forward away from the wall. So that's a back and forth swing. Back and forth. So from 120 centimeters to 40 centimeters and back to 120 centimeters, that is called a back and forth swing. And it tells us here that it takes eight seconds. A pendulum hung from the ceiling makes a complete back and forth swing every eight seconds. So the period of our sinusoidal function will be eight seconds. And how do we know that we're going to use a sinusoidal function? We're going to assume that the distance from the wall is a sinusoidal function of time. So we understand the problem now, and the first thing that we'd like to do is to write an equation express, expressing the distance the pendulum is from the wall as a function of time. And to help us with that, we can sketch the graph of d as a function of time. Before we do that, we'd like to just take a look at the figure once again and work with the fact that the 
period of the function is 8 seconds, that it takes 8 seconds for the pendulum to complete a back and forth swing. So if the pendulum is at a distance of 120 centimeters from the wall at time is equal to 1.5 seconds, 8 seconds later it will be back at this same place. So 1.5 plus 8 would be 9.5. So it will be back here again at time is equal to 9.5. Now it's going to take half of 8 seconds to go towards the wall and stop before coming back away from the wall. So half of 8 is 4. 1.5 plus 4 is 5.5 seconds. So we know that it will actually be at a distance of 40 centimeters from the wall at time is equal to 5.5 seconds, which is half of the period. So now we will begin by looking at what T is. T represents time in seconds since the pendulum was set in motion. And from the description of the problem, we know that one and a half seconds after it was set in motion, the distance from the wall is at a maximum of 120 centimeters. So we have the ordered pair 1.5, 120. I'll go ahead and plot that point. 1.5 for time and 120 for the distance from the wall. And you can see that in my figure. I just sketched where the pendulum would be at that time. The lower bound of D is 40 centimeters. Assume that D is a sinusoidal function of T. So again, as we said earlier, the period of the pendulum is uh, the period of the pendulum's swing is eight seconds. It'll take eight seconds for it to complete a back and forth swing. So this is going back towards the wall, and this is going back forward away from the wall and that's a back and forth swing and when the pendulum is closest to the wall we know that the lower bound of the distance from the wall is 40 centimeters so when it is closest to the wall the pendulum will be 40 centimeters away from the wall and when will that happen well it takes eight seconds for it to complete a back and forth swing so it'll take half that time to go closest to the wall. So half of 8 is 4 seconds. So at time is equal to 5 and a half seconds, it will be closest to the wall at a distance of 40 centimeters. I've entered that into my table as well as labeled my diagram with that information. And I will go ahead and plot the point 5.5 for time and 40 for the distance from the wall which would be right here. And then it'll take another four seconds to go back so that it would once again be at 120 centimeters from the wall. So 5.5 plus 4 would be 9.5. And from 1.5 seconds to 9.5 seconds is 8 seconds, the time it takes to complete a back and forth swing. So after 8 seconds, it's back furthest away from the wall at 120 centimeters. So 9.5 seconds after the swing, after it starts moving, it's once again at the furthest point away from the wall. Now, there is a halfway point between the furthest point and the closest point to the wall, when the pendulum would be halfway between. So if it takes 4 seconds for the swing backwards, it's going to take half of four seconds to be in the middle. Half of four seconds is two seconds, so 1.5 plus 2 will give me 3.5 seconds, and at that time, it would be halfway between 120, which is the furthest it could be from the wall, and 40, which is the closest it could be to the wall. That's a range of 80 centimeters. Half of 80 centimeters is 40 centimeters. So here it's 40 centimeters from the wall. 
at the furthest point it's 120 centimeters wall from the wall the range between 40 and 120 is 80 centimeters half of 80 is 40 so when it's in the middle of the swing it would be 40 plus 40 centimeters from the wall or 80 centimeters from the wall so we would be at a distance of 80 centimeters from the wall whenever the pendulum is in the middle of its swing that happens at 3.5 seconds as it is going back towards the wall and it also happens again at seven and a half seconds as it is going away from the wall so we will plot 3.5 80 3.5 is right here and then we will also plot 7.580 which is right here so with these five points I'm able to sketch one cycle of my graph and of course I can get another cycle of the graph uh, just by recognizing that 8 seconds after 9.5 seconds it will once again be furthest away from the wall so 9.5 plus 8 would be 17 and a half so at 17 and a half seconds it will once again be at the furthest uh, distance from the wall now half of 8 seconds is 4 seconds so 9.5 plus 4 would be 13.5 seconds and at that time it would be closest to the wall and between 9.5 and 13.5 halfway between we have 11.5 and at that time it will be halfway between closest and furthest from the wall at 80 centimeters and then halfway between 13 and a half and 17 and a half we have 15 and a half seconds and it would be at 80 centimeters once again so here's another cycle of the graph so we can do this and this can help us to find what we need for part A an equation expressing d as a function of time and because we're assuming that d is a sinusoidal function of t we may use our sinusoidal model so you have the option of either using cosine or sine in this particular problem cosine is the more natural choice for the following reason when you consider the graphs of the parent cosine and sine functions you'll see that cosine of 0 is 1 so the cosine curve starts at a high point whereas the sine curve starts at a middle point because sine of 0 is 0 and you can see here that for our particular graph for the distance from the wall we start at a high point so it makes more sense for us to use a cosine model rather than a sine model we can just use uh, the time at which the pendulum is furthest from the wall as our phase displacement d so in our problem we know that at time is equal to 1.5 seconds the distance is at a maximum of 120 centimeters from the wall so this is t is equal to 1.5 and that is going to be the value of the parameter d the next parameter that we can work on would be the parameter C which has to do with where the midline axis for the graph is the midline axis for our graph is at y is equal to 80 centimeters when the pendulum is halfway between its furthest distance from the wall and its closest distance to the wall so C would be equal to 80 centimeters because we have y is equal to 80 for the equation of the midline axis so we know c would be equal to 80 
the next thing that we can get is the value of the parameter a, which has to do with the amplitude. The amplitude of our graph is the distance from the midline axis to either a high point on the graph or a low point on the graph. The highest point on the graph has a d value of 120 centimeters and the distance from the midline axis to a maximum point on the graph would be in fact 40 centimeters. So the parameter a would be equal to 40. The last parameter that we can work on would be the parameter B. We know that has to do with the period and when we look at the period for our problem the pendulum is at a distance of 120 centimeters from the wall at time is equal to 1.5 seconds and it is once again at a distance of 120 centimeters from the wall at time is equal to 9.5 seconds. So the period is going to be 8 seconds. And that is the time it takes for the pendulum to make a complete back and forth swing. So now we can use that to solve for B because we know that the period is equal to 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b but since b is going to be positive I can just write b and that's going to be equal to the period which is 8 seconds so now you can do 2 pi is equal to 8 times b multiplying both sides of the equation by b divide both sides of the equation by 8 and you get b is equal to 2 pi divided by 8 which reduces to pi over 4. So that's the value of the parameter b. So now we can do part a. Write an equation expressing the distance from the wall as a function of time. So we're going to write y is equal to c is 80 plus a is 40 times cosine of the parameter b is pi over 4 times t minus d times t minus the parameter d is 1.5 that is our sinusoidal model modeling the distance the pendulum is from the wall measured in centimeters as a function of time since the pendulum was set in motion. Now we'd like to take a look at part B. Write an equation for the derivative function. So we have part A done. We have a function of time that tells us the distance the pendulum is from the wall measured in centimeters. Part B says to find the derivative of this function which will give us the instantaneous rate of change of the pendulum's distance from the wall at a particular time. And the, it, the units for the derivative, the units for the instantaneous rate of change would be centimeters per second. So now we will go ahead and find the derivative of the function from part A. So to find the derivative of the function from part A, you will recognize that we have a sum of two functions. The first function is a constant function. The derivative of a constant function is zero. So you'll have zero plus the derivative of the second function. And when you look at the second function, you'll see that you have a constant multiplying cosine of pi over 4 times t minus 1.5. And how do you find the derivative of a function uh, that is a constant times another function? So let's say you have g of x is equal to k times f of x. So the derivative of the function g will be the constant times the derivative of the function f. So to find the derivative of 40 times cosine of pi over 4 times t minus 
it will be equal to 40 times the derivative of cosine of pi over 4 times t minus 1.5. And when you look at cosine of pi over 4 times t minus 1.5, you will recognize that to be a composition of two functions where the inside function is the argument of the cosine. It is the inside function is pi over 4 times t minus 1.5 and the outside function is the cosine function. So how do you find the derivative of a composition of two functions? You must use the chain rule. So now we will have y prime is equal to the derivative of 80 is 0. 0 plus the derivative of the second function. 40 is the constant. So now we multiply 40 by the derivative of cosine of pi over 4 times t minus 1.5, which is a composition of two functions. The outside function is cosine, so we begin by using the chain rule. The derivative of the outside function is negative sine, so we have negative sine evaluated at the inside function, evaluated at pi over 4 times t minus 1.5. And then multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. So the derivative with respect to t of pi over 4 times t minus 1.5. So what is this derivative equal to? Once again, you'll use this differentiation rule. You have a constant here multiplying the function t minus 1.5. So the derivative with respect to t of this function would be the constant pi over 4 times the derivative of t minus 1.5. The derivative of t is 1 and the derivative of the constant is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. So what is this equal to? This is equal to pi over 4. So now you will take that constant factor of pi over 4. You have this 40 here. You have a factor of negative 1 here. So you will get negative 40 times pi over 4. So this is what you will have. And then you will, of course, have sine of pi over 4 times t minus 1.5. You can reduce 40 divided by 4, that becomes 10, so y prime would be equal to negative 10 pi times sine of pi over 4 times t minus 1.5. So we just did part b, we wrote an equation for the derivative function. So y prime is equal to negative 10 pi times sine of pi over 4 times t minus 1.5. Let's take a look at part c. Part c says how fast is the pendulum moving when t is equal to 4 seconds when t is equal to 12 seconds, and how do you explain the relationship between these two answers? We can look at the derivative function, because the derivative function tells us how fast the pendulum is moving at a particular instant in time. It tells us the velocity of the pendulum at a particular instant in time. Why do we say velocity? Because y prime could be positive, when the distance from the wall is increasing and y prime would be negative when the distance from the wall is decreasing. So the sign of y prime tells us whether the distance from the wall is increasing, meaning the pendulum is going away from the wall, 
or whether the distance from the wall is decreasing, which means the pendulum is moving towards the wall. So we see y prime tells us the velocity of the pendulum at a particular instant in time. It's the instantaneous velocity measured in centimeters per second. So to answer the question, how fast is the pendulum moving when t is equal to 4, we would evaluate y prime at t is equal to 4. And to answer the question, how fast is the pendulum moving when t is equal to 12, we would evaluate y prime at t is equal to 12. And then we will compare the two answers and think about the relationship between the two answers and explain. So here I have the table of the derivative function labeled f prime of x. Uh, I'm using x in desmos rather than t, but it means the same thing. It represents the number of seconds that the the number of seconds since the pendulum was set in motion. So now look at values of the derivative at time is equal to 4 and at time is equal to 12. The first thing that you would notice is that they are equal to each other. Why does that happen? What's the difference between 4 and 12? The difference between 4 and 12 is exactly 8 seconds, which is the period of our function y. Or maybe I should label it d. So let's label it d. d of t, and this would be d prime of t. So, 8 seconds is the period of the function d telling us how long it takes for the pendulum to complete one back and forth swing. So basically, you have the pendulum at a particular place at time is equal to 4 seconds. And if you look at the graph of d, this is where the pendulum is at time is equal to 4 seconds. S somewhere a, uh, more than 60 centimeters from the wall. We can take a look at this table for the function d. In Desmos, I used the variable x, but it means the same thing. And I label the function f of x. So here we have at time is equal to 4 seconds, the pendulum is at a distance of about 65 centimeters from the wall, 12, sec 12 seconds after the pendulum was set in motion, or 8 seconds later from 4 seconds, the pendulum is once again at a distance of about 65 centimeters from the wall. So it's at the same place in the swing. And uh, here we have time is equal to 4 seconds, and here we have time is equal to 12 seconds. So you can see that, uh, you can see at time is equal to 4 seconds that the pendulum would be moving toward the wall. How do I know that? When you look at the graph of the function d, which is what you see here in red, you can see that the function is decreasing at time is equal to 4, which means the distance from the wall is getting smaller and smaller which means the pendulum is moving toward the wall at that point in time. And that is why the velocity at 4 and 12, they're negative. And of course, they're the same because at these two times, the pendulum is at the exact same position in its swing. So at those two times, the pendulum is moving towards the wall at about 29 centimeters per second. Now we go on to part D. When time is equal to 10, 10 seconds, is the pendulum moving toward the wall or away from it? Explain. So you can look at the function d prime of t, evaluate that at t is equal to 10, and you can look at this table from Desmos for the derivative function. At time is equal to 10, the value of the derivative is about negative 12. And because it's negative, that means the distance from the wall is decreasing at that instant in time. Because remember, when the derivative of a function is negative on an interval, 
the original function is decreasing on that interval. And because the derivative of the function d is negative at time is equal to 10, the function d is decreasing at that time at a rate of about 12 centimeters per second. So the pendulum is moving toward the wall at about 12 centimeters per second at time is equal to 10 seconds. And if you look at the graph of the function d, which is what you see on the screen, uh, at time is equal to 10, where would the pendulum be? At time is equal to 10, the pendulum is at a distance of about 117 centimeters from the wall. Uh, but you can see from the graph that the graph of D is falling from left to right, which means D is decreasing, which means the pendulum is moving back towards the wall at that time at an approximate rate of about 12 centimeters per second. Why do I say approximate? Only be, I say approximate only because I'm rounding this particular value. But the derivative function tells you the exact instantaneous rate of change of the distance from the wall at a particular instant in time. Part E says, what is the fastest the pendulum swings? And where is the pendulum when it is swinging its fastest? So the fastest the pendulum swings, you can tell by looking at the derivative function, which tells you the velocity of the pendulum. You're looking for the maximum value of the derivative function, as well as minimum values of the derivative function. Maximum values will be positive velocities. Minimum values will be negative velocities. Uh, basically, when you have a maximum value, you have the pendulum moving the fastest away from the wall because the distance would be increasing. And when you have a minimum value, which is a negative velocity, you will have the pendulum moving fastest toward the wall because the distance would be decreasing. So we will take a look at the graph of the derivative function, but first of all, let's look at the graph of the function d, which we've been looking at for a while now, but I also did it in Desmos, and you can see when I erase what I had sketched earlier, it's of course the same graph that we're getting from Desmos. So this is the graph of the function d, telling us the distance the pendulum is from the wall at a particular time. Uh, we'd like to now take a look at the graph of not only the function d, but also d prime. But to make the graph of d prime fit, I'm going to change the scale for my axes. The scales uh, for my axes. Well, actually, not so much the scales, but just the window settings. So what is the fastest the pendulum swings? So as we just discussed, that happens at maximum values of the derivative function and minimum values of the derivative function. So within the first back and forth swing from time is equal to 1.5 seconds to time is equal to 9.5 seconds, we see that the graph of the derivative function has a maximum value at time is equal to 7.5 seconds. And it also has a minimum value at time is equal to 3.5 seconds. So what is the fastest the pendulum swings? At time is equal to 7.5 seconds, the velocity of the pendulum is about 31.4 centimeters per second. And at time is equal to 3.5 seconds, the velocity of the pendulum is about negative 31.4 centimeters per second. It's negative here because the distance is decreasing at time is equal to 3.5 seconds, as you see from the graph of D, which is falling at that point in time. So the pendulum is moving toward the wall. And at time is equal to 7.5 seconds, it's positive because the distance from the wall is increasing at that time, as you can see from the graph of D, at time is equal to 7.5 seconds, 
the graph of D is rising from left to right, the distance from the wall is increasing, so the velocity is positive. But you'll notice that the magnitudes of the two velocities are the same. So at those two times, within the first cycle, within the first back and forth swing, uh, the pendulum is moving the fastest. And it's swinging at a speed, if I consider speed, which is the magnitude of velocity, it's swinging at a speed of about 31.4 centimeters per second. Where is the pendulum when it is swinging its fastest? Where is the pendulum at these two times of 3.5 seconds and 7.5 seconds? If you look at the function d, at 3.5 seconds, the pendulum is at a distance of 80 centimeters from the wall, and at 7.5 seconds, the pendulum is at a distance of 80 centimeters from the wall. At 3.5 seconds, it's basically in the middle of its swing, like you see here uh, shown in green ink. And at that time, it is in the middle, middle of its swing, and it's going towards the wall. And at 7 and a half seconds, it is once again at the same place in the swing, but it is going away from the wall. Part F states, what is the first positive value of time at which the pendulum is swinging zero centimeters per second? Where is the pendulum at this time? So we can look at the graph of the derivative function as well as the table What is the first positive value of time at which the pendulum is swinging zero centimeters per second? So when you look at the graph of the derivative function, you can see that at time is equal to 1.5 seconds, the velocity of the pendulum is zero centimeters per second. You can see that clearly from the graph of the derivative function. Uh, prior to 1.5 seconds, the graph of the derivative function is above the horizontal x-axis, meaning the derivative has positive values. And at time is equal to 1.5 seconds, the derivative has a value of 0. So the time is equal to 1.5. That is the first positive value of time at which the pendulum is swinging 0 centimeters per second. Where is the pendulum at this time? at time is equal to 1.5 seconds, the pendulum is at a distance of 120 centimeters from the wall, the furthest from its swing. So basically what's happening is prior to 1.5 seconds, the pendulum's distance from, from the wall is increasing and therefore its derivative is positive. At 1.5 seconds, the pendulum stops momentarily before it starts moving towards the wall again. And on that time interval from 1.5 seconds to 5.5 seconds, the pendulum's distance from the wall is decreasing. So on that interval of time, the derivative of the function will be negative. At time is equal to 5.5 seconds, the pendulum once again stops momentarily and changes direction and it starts going away from the wall again. So at time is equal to 5.5 seconds, you can see that the velocity of the pendulum is once again 0 centimeters per second. And then from time is equal to 5.5 seconds to time is equal to 9.5 seconds, the pendulum moves away from the wall. The distance from the wall is increasing on that time interval, and therefore the derivative function is positive on that time interval. So whenever the function d is increasing on a time interval, the derivative is positive on that time interval. Whenever the function d is decreasing on a time interval, the derivative is negative on that time interval. And you will also notice that when the derivative goes from positive to negative, for example, at time is equal to 1.5, the function d has a relative maximum. And when the derivative goes from negative to positive, for example, at time is equal to 5.5 seconds, the function d has what we call a relative minimum.
So in this particular problem, we looked at writing an equation expressing the distance from the, the pendulum's distance from the wall as a function of time. We found the derivative of that equation. We used the derivative to answer questions about how fast the pendulum was moving at certain times. And we interpreted our answers in the context of our problem. And we also looked at maximum and minimum values of the derivative function to determine the fastest the pendulum swings. And we also looked at the derivative to answer the question from part f. You will notice that I labeled the vertical axis as having units of centimeters. That is, of course, for the function d of t. But for the function d prime of t, which is graphed here on the same set of axes, the vertical axis would actually have units of centimeters per second.